For this example, we are going to graph the following problem. I just realized I left a squared off of that one there. We're also going to identify the vertex and the intercepts for this particular equation here. So first we want to graph this here. So if we want to graph this, let me go ahead and put this in proper form. You do want your squared term to be in front, followed by x to the first, followed by your constant at the back of the equation here. So just taking a look at the equation that we have here, the first things that I notice, this equation is negative. Also, it is squared, which tells me I am looking at a negative parabola, which a negative parabola has this general shape right over here. It should be going downwards because the negative that we have right over there. So we want to find the vertex and we want to find the intercepts of this graph uh, or of, of this function here so that we can accurately graph it. So when we find the vertex, so there's a couple things that you can do here. Our equation is not given to us in vertex form. If it was given us to us in vertex form, we could easily grab the vertex from the equation using hk. Ours was not given to us in vertex form. Now, we could put this in vertex form, but if your equation is not in vertex form, there's another way that you can find the vertex of your equation, and that's by using this little formula right over here, negative b over 2a, f of negative b over 2a, will get you your coordinate for the vertex of your equation. So if we take a look at our equation, a is a negative 1, b is a 2, and c, we don't really need it, but c would be an 8. If we plug it into our little equation here, negative is part of the formula, b is a 2 over 2 times a, which gives us 2 times negative 1, which means we have a negative 2 up top, a negative 2 down bottom, giving us that our x value here for our vertex is a 1. If we know the x value, we can easily find the y value, plug in 1 into our equation. We're finding f of 1. Again, take our equation, doesn't matter which form of it here. I'm going to go ahead and take this bottom version of it here. We're plugging in 1 for x. So this is negative x squared, where x is 1, plus 2 times x plus 8. Simplify this, and that will give us our y value for our function. So when we simplify this, 1 squared is just a 1. Drop down that negative in front of it plus 2 times 1 is just a 2, plus 8. Negative 1 plus 2 is a 1, plus 8 gives us a 9. What that tells us, we have a vertex at a 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1 comma 9 is the vertex to our equation here. So we do know our vertex is 1, 9. We do know that this is a negative quadratic, so we know it should be going down at this are going downwards from that point. The other thing that we need to find for this example are the intercepts, which means we want to find the x-intercepts, we want to find the y-intercepts. Now in order to find the x-intercepts of any function, you want to set the equation equal to zero and you want to solve. So I'm going to take this variation of our equation, I'm going to set it equal to zero so we can solve this thing. Now the first thing I want to do, I want to see if this factors. I'm going to try and solve it that way. Solve by factoring. <coughs> and if we solve by factoring, if your leading coefficient is negative, you do want to get rid of that negative from the get-go. So divide everything by negative 1, which gives us 0 is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 8. We want to try and factor this quadratic equation. x times x gives us that x squared factors of 8 that add or subtract to get us a 2 would be a 2 times a 4, right? 2 times 4 is 8. 4 minus 2 gives us this 2 right over here. We're going to put that negative with the 4, the plus with the 2. Remember, whatever sign the middle term has, it needs to go with the bigger number. And if that back number is negative, they mean, that means signs have to be different. Otherwise, zero factor property tells us to split these factors up, set them each equal to 0, and solve. So we know that x is a negative 2 and x equals 4. Those represent our x-intercepts, which means over here on our graph, we can go ahead and put those points. We know we have intercepts at negative 2 and a positive 4. So this graph is going to go and it's going to connect to these two points here. 
which the right hand side we can go ahead and connect. The left hand side, let's go ahead and find that y intercept first and then we'll be done with this graph. In order to find the y intercept of any function, you want to go ahead and plug in zero for your x values. So I'm going to go ahead again and use this version of our equation. Plug in zero for x and you should get your y intercept. So whenever we plug in zero, well zero squared is zero, two times zero is zero, we are left with y is equal to eight. Which means a positive eight is our y intercept. If we go up eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that is where our graph is crossing that y axis. So that means we now know from our vertex it's going to hit this point and hit our x-intercept down there. And that is what our graph looks like for this example.